So good, so good to see everyone here today. Good morning to you. Uh, quick question, when is the last time that you were truly, truly astonished? Right? Like you were just in, in disbelief, you, you were just like surprised, you're kind of blown away. When is the last time you were astonished? Uh, I was talking to some people uh, right before the 9 o'clock service, and we are talking about gas prices. Is it me, or does it feel like gas prices have gone up like a dollar uh, this past week? It's just absolutely crazy, right? It could be a, something as simple as gas prices uh, bring astonishment, or it could be something as complex as the ghost town that was Los Angeles uh, not too long ago. Uh, right during the COVID lockdown, uh, that was pretty crazy, right? I mean, when have you ever seen uh, just like a dozen cars, less than a dozen cars, on the 101 and 110 uh, crossover like that, right? That was a, it was kind of astonishing, yeah. Uh, but they don't always have to be so ominous, right? You can be astonished by God's creation. Uh, you can be astonished by good things, right? Like like beautiful things, like maybe seeing the Grand Canyons for the first time. Oh my gosh, that's just amazing! I'm just blown away. Right or, or bioluminescent waves. Anyone see these? Like in re- okay, all right. So someone, like a couple people. Uh, I've not seen these yet, uh, but I would love to. Uh, but I just keep missing it. But that is that is just like amazing. Like how does that happen? I think it's like algae or something like that. It's just absolutely crazy. Uh, you know, I asked our staff earlier this week. I said I need some help. I need you guys to uh, help me think of some uh, astonishing examples. Do you guys have anything astonishing uh, that you can think of? And uh, uh, Pastor David was astonished uh, when I beat him in fantasy football last week. That He said, I don't know, he said that was astonished. No one else was astonished. <laughs> Pastor David, he's right over there. Uh, no one else was astonished, bro, but uh, only, only you were astonished. Anyways, I want to welcome you to New Story Church where we are diving in to the one time, it's only one time, that the Apostle Paul said he was actually blown away. He was astonished. He was, he was beyond belief. Uh, in case we haven't met, my name is Tom. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, we are starting a brand new series today where we go actually verse by verse. We start with the first verse and we end with the last verse by verse through this incredible, powerful New Testament book called Galatians. Galatians. Here's uh, what some spiritual giants who have gone before us have said about this particular book. Uh, The father of the Protestant Reformation, uh, Martin Luther, he said this. He said, the epistle, which is just a fancy word for letter, uh, the letter to the Galatians is my letter. It's my epistle. Uh, To it, I am, as it were, in wedlock. It is my Catherine. Uh, Erica was here, my wife was here at the first service, and uh, I've yet to say that, that any book in the Bible is my Erica, but, but the, here is Martin Luther saying, this book is my Catholic. That's a lot of love and devotion devoted towards one book. J.I. Packer. Uh, He was like a really popular author back in the day. When I was in college, everyone was reading uh, this book called Knowing God, right? He's a uh, a professor, I think, in Regent uh, up there uh, in the Northwest. Anyways, uh, J.I. Packer said, uh, the book of Galatians, this book that we're about to get into, is a declaration of Christian independence, independence, freedom, right? Uh, Philip Yancey, one of my favorite uh, Christian authors of all time, Uh, He says, in the pages of Galatians, I have found my freedom. Of all the books in the scripture, I have found my freedom in this book, this book of Galatians. Uh, The Prince of Preachers, uh, Charles Spurgeon, said this, No man ever got to the heart of the New Testament who did not begin with the epistle to the Galatians. Like, you don't even understand the heart of the gospel. You don't understand the heart of the New Testament unless you understand Galatians. So what exactly is so special about this little, tiny little book? It's just six chapters. What exactly is so special about this book? 
Well, uh, first, uh, let's uh, rewind. Uh, let's back it up a little bit. And let's understand that the entire New Testament, the 27 books, the 27 letters, as it were, uh, the, 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 the entire New Testament is a, actually, right, it's a compilation of these 27, uh, 27 separate uh, individual letters, right? The 27 uh, books, letters, um, and the most prolific author uh, is actually the Apostle Paul. He wrote no less than 13. Some scholars actually debate probably maybe even 14, but no less than 13 of the 27 New Testament books were written by one person, the Apostle Paul, including uh, this one to the churches in Galatia of Asia Minor, which uh, everyone recognizes the boot, right? That's over here, this red part here. Uh, that's actually modern-day Turkey, Yeah. And so Paul, one of Paul's 13, possibly 14 of the 27 letters is this one to, uh, written to the Galatians of Asia Minor. And just like we, uh, if you think about it, it's actually not that uncommon. Uh, anyone here send emails or receive emails? Yeah? Okay. Uh, is, we, we don't really think about it because it's so rote, because it's so natural. Uh, but if you think about emails, at the b very beginning, at the very, very beginning of Every single email, every email that you receive, every email that you send out, the one thing that it, all emails have in common is at the very beginning of the correspondence is a sort of, I'm going to call it like a standard salutation, as it were, right? What I mean by that is to, from, and re. Right? There's always, at, at every email, doesn't matter how short or how long the email is, doesn't matter who it's from, it's to, from, and re. And you know what? Scripture is very similar. The Bible is this, especially in the New Testament, very, very similar. In other words, structurally, Galatians, like most of the other books in the New Testament, starts with to, from, and re, just like an email. To the Galatians, from the Apostle Paul, Re, regarding the gospel, right? Or, as we just heard in a much more lovely voice, especially today because I'm kind of congested, but as we heard in the opening bumper from a much more lovely voice, Galatians chapter 1, verse 1 says this. Paul, an apostle. There's the from. That's the from in the email. From. From Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers and sisters with me. And now here's the, here's the two, right? To the who? To the churches in Galatia, right? It's from the apostle Paul, to the churches in Galatia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And now here's the re. What's it regarding? It's regarding the one who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. So, so friends, do you see? I'm just trying to set this up. Uh, there you have a to, a from, and a re. Right? Pretty standard as far as opening salutations for many, if not all, of the New Testament books. But here's where it gets interesting. This is fascinating. Notice the very next thing that the Apostle Paul writes after the standard sort of beginning. Right? What, what, what are the first three words that he says? He says, I am astonished. I, I'm in disbelief. I am shocked. I can't believe it. See, right away, right away, the tone is very sharp. It, it, it's, it's, it's very strong. You might even say that it's like a little bit like angry, even agitated, yeah? It, 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 and it doesn't take much to realize as the reader, like something's up here. Some, some, something's going on, yeah? Like have you ever received... That email, yeah, from someone who's like hot and bothered, what is happening, right? We need to talk right now, yeah? You get that email, it's like, bro, are you serious? Yeah? See, right away, we know this is different. We, we know it's different because in all the other letters, that Paul writes, he always starts very cheerful, 
very happy, very full of thanksgiving and joy, right? But don't take my word for it. Like, look at one of his first letters, right, to the Corinthians. He says, I always thank my God for you. I'm just so thankful. Like, after the from to re, after the, 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 the beginning, the, the opening header, so to speak, I, he, just, he just exudes his thankfulness, right? In Philippians, same thing. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. After the standard from to re, right, he goes, I thank my God. God, I'm so thankful. Every time I remember, every time I pray for you, I'm just full of joy. Man, I love you guys. I'm so happy. Right? To the Colossians, same thing. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 3, after the from to re, yeah, he says, we all, all of us here, we're always thanking God because of you. Well, every time we pray for you, we're just so full of thanks. Yet when it comes to these Galatians, it's like, I am astonished. I can't believe it. Okay, so, so why is the Apostle Paul so, hard, uh, so, so like hot and bothered right now, right, right from the jump? Why is that? Well, we read verse 6. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. And he continues, evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we already said, so now say it again, in case you missed it the first time, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. He's like hailing down curses right now. These are strong feelings, yeah? So, so, so like what, what's, what's happening here? Well, first of all, let, let's understand this. The book of Galatians, uh, more so than any other letter from Paul, is all about the gospel proper. Like in other books, he addresses different things. and other letters, he addresses different But like the Galatians, Galatians is all about the euangelion, right? The, the Greek word for, for the good news, right? We get our word evangelism or evangelist from the euangelion, right? The, the, the book of Galatians is all about the gospel proper. I mean, just think about it, right? After the like kind of opening like salutations from, read to, right? After all that, the very first paragraph like, what word do you see there over and over again? Gospel, 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 gospel. Five times in four short verses. Five times in four small sentences. Five times in one tiny little paragraph, that word gospel appears over and over again. So make no mistakes. Both literally and thematically, the book of Galatians is all about the gospel. Now, if I'm completely candid, here is where actually many of us start to tune out. Especially if you've been going to church for a while. Like if you grew up in church, or you've been doing Christian things for a long time. I'm talking about like, not just years, but like decades. There's a trap here. We, we tend to fall into this trap. The longer you've been a Christian, the longer you've been a part of a, a faith community that is a church, we, we, we tend to tune out right about now. And here's what I mean. When I say things like Galatians... Is all about the gospel. When I say things like, you know, in the opening paragraph alone, the word gospel appears five times. When I say things like, hey guys, for the next few weeks, we're gonna just dive deep into nothing but the gospel. Okay? When I say things like that, those of you who maybe have been attending church for a long time, 
you, you would probably never say this out loud, uh, although I actually have been a part of conversations where it is said out loud, but, but m- more likely than not, you probably wouldn't say this out loud, but like in your heart of hearts, in your thoughts, you, you might think something like this. Oh, okay, all right, the gospel. The gospel's great. I'm a Christian. I've been going to church for a long time. I love the gospel. Awesome. Great job, Pastor Tom. Keep preaching the gospel. Gospel's good. That's awesome. But you know, I already know the gospel, right? I'm good. I, I, like, like maybe this series is for like my barista friend down the street who doesn't know the gospel, okay? But it's not for me. I already know the gospel. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm just kind of good. Maybe I'll just kind of tune out just a little bit because I already know the gospel. This is apparently a series for someone else. I need more, and th- th- this phrase is often used a lot, like, you know, there's milk and, and then there's, I need more meat. I need more meat, Right? Uh, If you're thinking that way, if there's a part of you that kind of resonates with that, I I just want to share with you a soundbite I intentionally left out earlier from like, you know, all these spiritual giants uh, so that I could share it with you now, actually. Uh, It comes from uh, one of my favorite preachers, hands down. He is my favorite preacher, hands down. And uh, he was a longtime pastor of a church in 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 a big metropolis area that was filled with uh, both uh, what I would call the overchurched and the underchurched. This church was filled with both believers and, and non-believers, okay? It's, it's church very much like our own. Here we are in downtown Los Angeles, major thriving metropolis, and we too are filled with people that have been going to church for a long time and people that have just started coming to church like weeks ago, literally, I was talking to one uh, earlier this morning. And I know they're listening online right now and, and, and even in this room, right? So very similar to ours. Uh, here's what the late Tim Keller said. He said, the book of Galatians is a book on the gospel, expounding the gospel, articulating the gospel, pounding the gospel to Christians. But maybe you're like I am, he says. And that is, maybe you have also thought there's the gospel which is Milk, and then you move on to meat. He concludes, you never move on. You never move on. The gospel is the milk. It is the meat. It is the appetizer. It's the dessert, and it is everything. See, friends, I bring this up because I need to say, let's just get this straight. At no point in your spiritual journey, at no point in your Christian walk, do you ever graduate from the gospel to something better, to something bigger, to something deeper, to something sweeter, to something meatier. That doesn't happen. At no point in your Christ-like formation do you ever move beyond the gospel. See, because in a very real way, those who think they know the gospel to the point that it has somehow become rote or habitual, casual, trivial, maybe even boring, that person is very far from the gospel. If you think you know the gospel so much, so well, for so long, that it's become mm, ho-hum, meh. Like, I know it's good, but I don't really get excited about it. Well, then you are very far from the gospel. You are very far from the gospel. Conversely, for those for whom the gospel is new, new every morning, like a fresh breath of air, For those for whom the gospel is living and breathing and dynamic and life-giving, this is a person who is actually starting to grasp the gospel. Or have you already forgotten? Like these aren't just my ideas, but but have you forgotten the text? Like, like, Like contextually speaking, right? 
Who was Paul writing to? Contextually speaking, the intended audience of his exposition of the gospel is not to a group of pagans in Turkey, right? He's not writing to a bunch of heathens and, and godless people in Asia Minor. He's not, write, he's, not, he's not thinking that this letter that he's writing to is going to go to the bars and marketplaces and clubs of Galatia. No, no, no. Who is Paul writing to? Paul is specifically writing to all the professing Christians, to the churches, plural, in Galatia. In other words, both Christians and non-Christians alike need a continual stream of the gospel in our lives. You know, earlier this week in our Rooted group, we were uh, talking about how doesn't matter how long you've been going to church, doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, right? Every single day, in some way, shape, or form, we need the gospel preached to us. We need to intake the gospel in some way, shape, or form. Like personally speaking, myself, like, like for me and my spiritual walk, my, my daily walk, like I just, I need to be reminded of the way, the truth, and the life that is Jesus Christ. After all, it is Jesus who said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross just once when he says the sinner's prayer. No. If anyone would come after me, let him do so daily, daily, and follow me. See, this is why I appreciate what, Killer, what Keller uh, continues to spell out. He, he says this, if you have been in Christ for two minutes or two days or two months or two years or two decades, what you really need, what you really need is the gospel. If you're confused, if you're struggling with suffering, if you're sliding back into old habit patterns, whatever your issue is, you need the gospel. Does anyone here need the gospel today? I do. I do. Every day. And so what exactly is the gospel? Well, Paul actually summarized it right before letting us know that he was so astonished. Did you catch it? He actually says right there, he kind of gives his minor salutation, grace and peace to you from God our Father, right? And the Lord Jesus Christ, and here it is, here's the gospel, here's the gospel, a very summarized nutshell form. The gospel is the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins. To what? To rescue us from the present evil age. You see, friends, first and foremost, what we need to remember, what we need to realize is that the gospel rescues us. It rescues us. We were in a position where we needed to be rescued, salvaged, saved. The gospel rescues us. Jesus is the rescuer. And the moment we forget that we are in need of being rescued, that is the moment the gospel becomes trite. The moment you think you're so stable and you don't need rescuing. That is the moment the, the gospel becomes trivial. See, Paul reminds us the Lord Jesus Christ rescues, rescues us from our sins and he rescues us from the present evil age. Jesus rescues us. We can't rescue ourselves from our own sin. We can't rescue ourselves from the present evil age. Only Jesus can and does rescue us. And that, my friends, is a major distinction between Christianity and all other world religions. Like, like let me put it to you this way. Th think about it like this. <clears throat> If you fell prostrate right now before Muhammad, if you fell prostrate on the ground before Buddha or, or Confucius or, or, or whoever, and you were to call them Savior, they would all flinch. All of them. They, they would balk, right? 
They, they'd be like, oh, he's prophet? Yeah, sure, you can call me prophet. Teacher? Sure, yeah, I, I teach a lot of things. In line one, yeah, okay, even that. But savior? No, 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 no. I, I, that, that's not what I, I can't save you. I, I can maybe teach you a few pointers. I can put you on the right path, but I, I, I can't save you. But Jesus, you fall prostrate before Jesus and say, Savior? He's like, what's up? What you need? I got you. I got you. Yeah? See, friends, when a person is drowning, when a person is drowning, the last thing they want you to do is throw them an instruction manual that teaches them how to swim. That does nothing. That actually hurts more, yeah? When a person is, God forbid, God forbid, if your child was drowning, you would jump in. If your child was drowning, you would jump in and you would give yourself, you would give yourself to rescue your child, yeah? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself up the Lord Jesus gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. Am I preaching to anybody here today? Paul is saying Jesus is all you need. All you need is Jesus. Jesus plus nothing still equals everything. Jesus plus nothing still equals everything. That is the message of grace. For it is by grace you have been saved. That is the power of grace. Which is why Paul is so astonished that all these churches have abandoned the power and the purity of the gospel for something else. I am astonished you are so quickly deserting the one who called you. And by the way, I just want to pause there for a second. Notice, notice when you reject the gospel, you're not just rejecting a propositional truth. When you reject the gospel, you are also rejecting a person, the rescuer, the savior, right? This is why Paul says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting, not just the gospel, but the, the one who called you. This one, this rescuer who called you to live in his grace. And you're turning to like something else. You're turning to like a different gospel, which is not really a gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion or trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. And we're going to get into the specific ways that these people were trying to pervert the gospel of Christ later on in the series. But for right now, let me just highlight what Paul's point here is. And that is, Jesus don't need your help. Okay? His message doesn't need you to add anything to it. The gospel, Jesus' message, doesn't need your help. Again, we're going to get into the details later, but for now, just understand that people back then, just like people today, they wanted to add something to the gospel. You and I are guilty of this as well. I don't think we intentionally do this for the most part. I think we sort of subconsciously, like, like unknowingly do this, but, but just intuitively, we think and behave in a manner that says, ah, uh, you know, I know the gospel is like really, really important. It's like so important, but like, mm, I think it's actually the gospel Plus, like living a good life, right? That must be what it is. It's like the gospel plus mm, like spiritual disciplines. The gospel plus uh, getting baptized. The gospel plus mm, obeying the Ten Commandments. Like, like that must be what it is. It must be the gospel plus living a holy and righteous life that gets me into heaven. Nope. That's not what it is at all. In fact, if you come with that kind of logic to the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul is going to be like, mm, you, 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 where did you go awry? 
You've actually deserted the gospel. No, actually, I'm going to say you perverted the gospel of Christ. You turned it into a different gospel, which is actually no gospel at all. See, this is why I like to think of it, and you you might want to jot this down. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. That is the message of grace. And what this passage further shows us, what it further reveals, is that Jesus plus anything equals nothing. That's just the weakness of works. Jesus plus anything equals nothing. Nothing that can save you. Nothing that can rescue you. You don't need to add to Jesus and his message anything at all. And the moment you do, actually, that's actually the moment that you pollute it. That's the moment where you distort it. And this is why Paul is so adamant. Hey, guys, even if I come back to you, even if an angel drops down from heaven and preaches to you something else, like, no, 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 let it be under God's curse. If anybody is preaching to you anything else, Let them be under God's curse. Jesus plus anything equals nothing. Jesus plus anything is polluted and distorted. It is not the gospel at all. Stay away. This is why in a few moments, band's gonna lead us in a song. Couldn't be any better for this this particular message. In Christ alone. In Christ alone. That's it. Jesus doesn't need anything else. Don't even add just a little tiny bit of anything. Works, like even like just the spiritual discipline. I'm not saying that living a good life is wrong. I'm not saying that spiritual discipline is bad. Of course, those things are good. But you can't add it to the gospel. You can't add it to it. Why? Because to do so is to diminish the power of the cross. Paul even says later on, I don't even want to preach with wise words. Why? Because it diminishes the power of the gospel. That's how far he he doesn't want to, he just wants to be a fool amongst all these smart people. To do so, to add anything is to diminish the power of the cross. To do so is to diminish the sacrifice of Jesus. To do so is to both dilute and pollute the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to say this, uh, it may or may not surprise you, depending on how well you know me, but uh, I, believe it or not, uh, you, you guys know I'm married now for 23 years, have three daughters, okay, so I'm like the only male in the house, uh, but believe it or not, I am not, I am not the most beloved male in my house, okay, I've come to terms with it, I'm okay, Jesus heals me, okay? But I, I am not the most beloved male. It's uh, because of this guy, okay? This guy. This guy is the most beloved male in the house. Hands down, okay? I just, maybe I am kind of doing a little counseling from the pulpit of myself, but I just, this guy can do no wrong in my house. Like, it doesn't matter what he does. I can do no right. He can do, I'll just, all right, that's too far. But it, this guy can do nothing wrong, okay? But here's what I would say. I would say this. I would say, don't let his cuteness fool you. He is a rascal, okay? Just a rat, and he knows it too. It's like he does something bad, and all the women in the house, they just all love on him, and he just kind of gives me a look, <laughs> you know? Okay, Anyways. all right. So all that to say, Anyone here, raise your hand nice and high if you have a pet at home. Raise your hand nice and high. Okay. Keep them raised if your pet is a dog. Is, is your dog? Okay. All right. A lot of, okay. A lot of, okay. So uh, this, you've been staring at this bag all, all service. Louis Vuitton. Okay. Anyways, uh, 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 d- tell me if you, if you recognize, not, not this bag, but, but, but tell me if you recognize this bag within the bag. Okay. You guys, you guys, um. Uh, you guys, you guys recognize this, right? All, all, all you dog people, right? Let me ask you this. The, the contents in this bag, okay? Like how much of the contents in this bag would it take for this ah, pure water? How much would it take of this to make this impure? Hmm? How much would it take? Like, like for instance, I think I have... 
I think I have a, okay, I'm going to use, I came prepared. I got some gloves here, okay? Let me just ask you, right? Like, 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 like let me just, okay, let, let's see, all right? Anything for Jesus, folks. Just, just, you better remember this point. I just, okay, just remember this point, okay? Okay, guys, just bear with me. I'm, let's make this as quick as possible, okay? How much, how much, how much of this, okay, in here would make this impure? Would it, would it have to take a big, a big piece like that? Or, or just, just, let me just even say like, like just how about, how about a smaller piece like this? With, with just a smaller, not the whole bag, just a small little piece, like, like just this little piece. Would, would that be okay if I put it in here? And, and would, would, it, would it still be pure? I can still... I can still drink it if it's just this little piece. Or how about this? I think I have in my little toolkit. Okay. How about, how about if I just take this little spoonful, okay, this little spoonful, and I just put this little spoonful in there like this, okay? Would this, would this, still, would this still be impure? It's just a little tiny bit. You can't even see it. It's just a, a little, some of it's sinking, some of it's floating. Okay, it's just a little tiny bit of this. Just small. Look at how much water this is. And it's just a fractional part. Well, like, would this be impure to you? Like, would you drink it? Would you drink it? You know? <laughs> Are you astonished? Now you understand the heart of Paul. Let's pray. <laughs> By the way, it's just chocolate, everybody. I, it's just chocolate. I got you. I got you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, it is amazing the kinds of things we try to add to the gospel. We try to add good works. We try to add the perfect theology. We try to add a good life. We try to add all our traditions and, and, and human resources. We'll see this later on in the book of Galatians, how, how people were coming to the gospel and they were saying, well, I was born in the right family. I did right things. My theology is up to par. What kinds of things are we adding to the message of Christ? What kind of things are we adding to the name of Jesus to be rescued? Father, we wanna cast all those away, Lord. And we wanna hold tight to nothing but Jesus Christ. We wanna hold on tight to nothing but the message of Christ, the gospel. The gospel is all we need. The gospel is all we need. Jesus is all we need. We don't need anything else. We don't need anything else. And when we grab hold of Jesus, when we grab hold of his message, that changes everything. So Father, my prayer is for everyone here, whether they've been coming to church all their lives, or maybe today is their first day, Maybe there's somewhere in between. Father, may we experience the sweetness that is Jesus. May the fact that we are rescued from ourselves and from this world not be a trite and trivial thing. We've been rescued. We were drowning and you dove in. You didn't, you didn't throw us an instruction manual. You didn't even throw us a life preserver. You dove in. And in fact, you took our place. You hurled us up. You hurled us up. You took our place and died for us. That is the message of Jesus Christ. And to that and that alone, we want to hold. To that and that alone, we want to embrace. So Lord, hit us anew by the power of your spirit. Give us a fresh wind by the power of your word. We love you and we worship you. We pray that because of this time, we would fall actually deeper in love with you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen.